Well, welcome and thanks for joining me in the Azure Communication Services video library. My name is Dan Wallin. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. And in this video, we're going to take a look at a demonstration of how you can add calling capabilities into your iOS apps. To see how this works, we're going to have Jim jump into a demonstration and show us all about the UI library and using something called Kali Composite, which, by the way, we've covered in a different video. You can go through the same quick start steps that Jim's going to be showing you by going to the aka.ms slash ACS UI quick start link that you see on your screen. So with that, let me turn it over to Jim and let's have him walk us through this demonstration. Hi, so today I'll be going through the Azure Communication Service for the quick start to the UI library for iOS. There are some prerequisites that we'll be needing, such as having an Azure account in order to create an Azure Communication Service token that we'll be using later in the demo. And you will need to have a Mac running Xcode 13 or above and have CocoaPod installed. And in this demo, we'll also show you uh, how this can work with Microsoft Teams with the interoperability feature. So we'll be creating a very simple app that will just have one button to launch the composite experience. Let's create a simple app and call it a UI library quick start, but feel free to rename it as you need. And we'll be creating as a storyboard and the language will be Swift. So let's go ahead and do that. So creating app, call it the UI library quick start with the interface storyboard. You can use with Swift UI, but for this demo, we will be uh, going with the storyboard and the language is Swift. So let's go next and create this in the demo folder that we have. Uh, now we have created a project. Let's go to the next step. So we'll need to install, uh, initialize CocoaPod for the project and you can do pod in it in the folder using terminal and uh, having the pod file with this content. You can copy that here. And after you have that, then run pod install repo update. And finally, when that's done, then you will need to the X, you will need to open the XC workspace file with Xcode. So let's go to terminal. Let's go to desktop demo the folder I just created, then into the project that we just created. So you can see there's these files, but let's do pod init to initialize CocoaBot. And now you can see there is this pod file and you can use an editor to uh, copy over the contents, but I'm just going to use them for this demo and just delete everything and insert it, uh, save these. And you should see these now in the pod file. And let's do pod install dash dash repo update. So while we wait for this to install, uh, I can show you that we have this uh, Xcode proj, but then we need to wait for XC workspace to be created. Uh, should be creating soon. And once that's done, we'll need to reopen this uh, Xcode so we can see the dependencies. So let's do ls so you can see there's the XC workspace file. And let's open that with uh, the shortcut XCD and then just it'll try to locate the, the workspace file. So now you can see that there's a CocoaPod uh, the pods with the needed framework. And let's go to the next step. So because this is UI library for communication, you will need to grant access for the microphone and camera permission to the, to your application. We can do that inside of the info.plist and we can open as source code and paste the content here. Uh, in the root of the dictionary. And to verify you had done that successfully, uh, you can open this plist as a property list. And you will now see that there's a ca privacy camera and privacy microphone. And we'll also need to turn off Bitcode because currently the library does not support Bitcode. And you can do that by going to uh, the project, selecting the project and build settings. Make sure you select all and combine and search for bit and then you'll see in the bit code. Let's disable that and make it to a uh, no. And okay. And the next step, we'll have to go to the view controller to paste in the snippet of code here. Instead of having the regular uh, remote options with Google call, we'll be 
using a different one for a team's call. So let's replace everything here. And let's go to find a snippet for the team's meeting. So let's replace that for the remote options here. And there are some placeholder that we need to replace. So the first one is the user access token. If you have created a Azure Communication Service resource, then you can go to it and then under the identity and user access token, make sure you grant the permission for voice and video calling for VOIP and generate a token. And you can copy this user access token over and replace this. And for the display name, let's just call it uh, maybe John Appleseed. So let's go to Teams meeting and then we can copy the meeting link here and paste it in over this placeholder. And we can run this in our device. So I'll be running on my iPhone. So because it's the first time running, so it may take a little while to build, but once it's built, then you'll see the app with a button. But meanwhile, let's go through some of the other features that the composite allow you to do the customizations for. So you can see that we have already created a composite and using a token and we can do by default with a group call and this will be a UUID, but we're uh, this demo, we're doing a Teams meet link. And the uh, composite also supports you to subscribe to the error events and also apply a custom theme as well as having a um, custom localization for the language that we support. So you can find uh, more information inside of the how-to guides under the using the UI library for setup localization, theming, and custom data model injection. So let's see if the, the app is done building. So now the UI sample app has been installed, then we can start experience. And this will based on the hard-coded value that we had in our code snippet, and it will join this uh, Teams meeting. So we can turn on our camera, but it will require permission. So you can see, and we can join this meeting. Because this is a Teams interrupt meeting, so when it's trying to join the meeting, it will be prompted to wait for host to uh, add, it, add you into the lobby. So you can see that John Appleseed is now in the lobby. And you can see that I am in the call, so, uh, with Microsoft Teams, you can also share screen and the library will also be able to see this content. So it's screen sharing and you can see the screen and also in landscape. Well, thanks, Jim. Great job on that demonstration. I hope everybody has a pretty good idea about how you can get started with calling composites in your iOS apps. A really powerful feature that can allow you to add this type of capabilities into your own custom applications. So there's a lot of other videos available in the Azure Communication Services video library, and you can go to the link on your screen here to learn more about Azure Communication Services in general. We'll see you in the next video.